Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths, building a complete ship start to finish. And so last time we built the hull, and the link to part one is in the description if you feel like going and watching that. And today we're going to do the AI compartment. So, like I said before uh, in the first episode, you don't have to do things in the order I'm doing them. You can do them in, well, almost any order you want, really. Anything that works for you. But in this particular case, if I'm doing a hull first build, I then like to do the AI compartment. So a few things before we start. Um, when building an AI compartment, you have to worry about EMP a lot, because uh, that is a very quick way your AI can get cooked. If it's sitting on the wrong kind of material, and an EMP surge comes in and fries it, and then that's a very bad time. And it's usually good to have more than one if you have wildly different weapon systems. So in this case, we're going to have advanced cannons, uh, a cram cannon, particle cannons, lasers, missiles, torpedoes, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to have at least three AIs. We're going to have one controlling uh, the main weapons, the cram and main advanced cannon. We're going to have something controlling missiles and torpedoes because it's handy to turn those off because they're very material hungry. So if they're not hitting, best to turn them off. And we're also going to have an AI controlling the hit scan weapons, which are is going to be the lasers and particle cannons. So let's jump in. So I'd just like to point out that um, I have a prefab, which I almost always use. It looks like this, and it has pretty much all the AI components you could possibly want. But we're going to build from scratch today. And also, we're going to be wrapping our AI in rubber, because as of now, rubber has the best EMP defense of pretty much any kind of block. Uh, you can see there, 30% plus 60 uh, damage reduction uh, per meter that the EMP surge passes through. And... Also, uh, you can just see it's way better than anything else. The only things that even come close is wood and stone. But rubber is where it's at, so we're going to need some of that. And But uh, since rubber isn't particularly durable, you do need to wrap it in something that is durable. So if you want to keep things a little bit light and a little bit cheap, you could just wrap it in metal. But today we're doing heavy armor because heavy armor is heavy and it's armor. And we have a bunch of heavy armor already. And uh, hopefully our buoyancy isn't too negatively affected by a heavy AI compartment. So we're going to start off with a 7x7 seven seven, um, base of heavy armor like so to wrap a 5x5 five five box of rubber in here. So we're going to do that. And so we have that and that's very nice. It is arguably a little bit of overkill uh, to have this much uh, this full wrapping of rubber but I just like to do it just to make uh, life really hard for any EMP surge that comes through so we've got our starting off point there I am making uh, this heavy armor a part of the floor extending this outward a little bit and just so we have enough room to do our AI stuff so here is our AI channel so to start off with, we've got, uh, we're have got we going to have one main AI uh, to control the ship's movement and to control the main weapons. So we're going to go over here, we're going to have our mainframe. And it's helpful to name mainframes as well, just so you can tell them apart. So in this case, we're naming it after uh, one of my Patreon supporters, that's one of the perks. So, it's going to be the captain, whoopsie daisy, it's going to be the captain... Cardinal Caesar, or Cardinal Kaiser, and we're just going to be main. I would like to put more than that, but it won't let me. So there we go. Congratulations, uh, Caesar. So now, save the vehicle, of course. So here's our main block. We're going to have a transmitter, so it can transmit to local weapon controllers and detection and all that kind of stuff. And speaking of detection, we're going to put our wireless snooper. Never underestimate... Uh, the wireless snooper because uh, even when all your other detection systems have been blown off um, oh I forgot that uh, I literally did not notice that uh, they've changed the graphics for the the blocks just you know they hover actually next to the UI uh, as opposed to as opposed to just in the background that's so cool 
Sorry about that, I got distracted. Um, so yeah, I have seen ships with uh, all other detection systems blown off still land accurate shots using the wireless snooper. And so it's just a very handy thing to have. Never leave home without it. Got a card slot because um, we're going to put some behavior cards in there. Um, you can use these kind of cards here just to like uh, quickly uh, make your AI do what you want. These is mo this is mostly for new players. We're going to be a little bit more advanced and not bother with those. So we're going to have a target prioritization and our aim point selection card. Very handy. So to start off with uh, the target prioritization, we're going to set that to zero. And generally something like this is the bare minimum because you want uh, your craft to shoot at things which are close because they're more likely to hit it, which is very nice. And we're also going to set that to max blocks because we want to go for the big things, the big threatening things. And we're going to have a times one multiplayer for the current target right there. And what else, what else, what else? So that seems all fine. You don't have to go completely nuts in here unless you want uh, your weapon systems to go for very specific targets. So we're going to have that. By the way, Cardinal is how it's spelt. The internet would not lie to me. My patrons would not lie to me. <laughs> anyway, so from there, uh, we do need to work out how much of this space is going to go to general purpose processing cards because you need those. Uh, you can see right now we don't have enough even for this wireless snooper, uh, but we need to think ahead of time like what on earth we are actually going to uh, have on our craft. So in order to kind of plan ahead of time a little bit, uh, it's helpful to actually as you're building the air compartment, uh, just place the detection systems you know you're going to use. Uh, on it, so it doesn't matter they can't see out. Uh, they're still using the same amount of uh, processing power, so we're going to have at least two of these uh, hidden inside or on our main turrets. And of these main turrets, it's going to have... Uh, let's see here, it's going to have a camera and a camera tracker inside each one, so... Going to have that, and also going to have these. And also, it's going to have on top a laser tracker and 360 camera. It's also going to have a passive uh, radar and a active radar and also on the bottom it's going to have a passive sonar and an actual sonar. So we need 24 GPPPPPPP. So that is a uh, good to know ahead of time. Uh, this is going to be quite a big AI compartment. We might need to double stack this. In fact, we probably will. So let's do this and see how much we need. Because each each card only provides one, which is frustrating. So there we go. I think we're going to double stack this because we do have a lot of length, but we also have a little bit of height. So we're just going to do this. And we're probably going to do this, like so. And the great thing about AI compartments is that you can sneak stuff in at a later time. So we've got a little bit of extra there. So great, there's our main AI. So now we know that's happening, we can delete all of this. And wait for the game to catch up to what we're doing. It's always a little bit fuzzy when it does that. That scared me. And delete, delete. Jolly good. Alright, so we can actually move this over here. Should have memorized the number. What was it? There we go. 28, I think, was the number. So we're going to carry on there. We're going to carry on building up this little AI compartment. Like so. So, like so, like so. So there's our first AI, but we have, we need more than one. So, a fun trick you can do in the AI compartment is to do something like this, because you can't put them connectly, uh, connectly, directly on each other, because then they mess with each other's steez, so that's bad. So what you can do instead is something like this. This is going to be our secondary AI. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to load up my 
Patreon again to see who gets to be named uh, in charge of the lasers. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Active ones, please. Current tier. Let's do... Yes, 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 yes. Let's do... Whoops. Hit scan. And... LT... Tinkerbell. There we go. I always never remember how to say Lieutenant. So, fun thing you can do... Uh, actually, hold on. We'll say something else first. We have other notes to say. I have too many windows open. Okay, so in this particular case, I actually forgot to mention the aimpoint selection card over here. Generally best to set this to one, clusters of blocks, and that generally does the trick. Uh, for the hit scan uh, weapons, though, we're going to do something a little bit different. So in this case, we got target prioritization. We want to definitely set that to one, and we also want to put a little. Uh, excuse me. I want to put a little bit of speed there. And do I want a bonus? Uh, no, let's just leave it like this for now. Uh, and for the aim point selection, I'm actually going to set this a little bit higher. And I'm going to set it to target hot blocks. Like so. And try and target blocks above water. The particle cannons can hit things below water just fine. Um, but doesn't matter too much. Uh, blowing up stuff above the water is just fine for them. And so now, we need to think ahead of time what we want here, because we want, what do we want? We want radar trackers, and actually, let's save our vehicle quickly. All right, so, we're going to have, we are going to have on each, on the main laser turret, uh, we're going to have, going to have radar trackers, and also, infrared tracker so let's see how much is this it actually is just fine we don't e even need more gppp than that but we can save it um let's see yeah we really don't that's one of the great things about infrared is that they don't require too much uh, general purpose processing power which is neat so we've done that we've done that excellent excellent let's see here do, do, do. So now we can do the same thing again. In fact, we can prefab this. In fact, we can get really clever. And we can actually hide the missile controllers in here. Should we choose? Let's go here. And we're just going to flip this around like so. And who shall we put in charge of the missiles? Who shall we put in charge of the missiles? Let's put... Because they're smashy smashy. Let's put... Here we go. Dr. Smashy. <laughs> yeah, we can just put... It's just Dr. Smashy. And... And... Torps. There we go. So we've got our crew assembled, so to speak. And that's all set up ahead of time. And that's very, very nice. Very nice, and it's all fitting neatly into this uh, rather modest uh, size in here. And you might be wondering what I'm going to do with this extra space in here. Don't even worry about it, because there's stuff we can put in there. We can put ACBs, we can put actual missile controllers and stuff like that. In fact, we could very easily do stuff like that. It's just, you know, we've got options. It's good. And... Let's see here. Do I want to do that? I'm just going to... Um, I'm actually going to just leave a little bit extra here because, uh, when in doubt, you can always seal things off um, with... You can always, like, it's always nice to leave a little bit of space in your AI compartment just in case you need to use it for other things. So I'm going to do that for now and we can fully seal up our AI compartment. And that's a video right there. There we go, there we go. Apologies, there's no huge explosions happening. Actually, hold on a minute. This is four meters tall. If you know what that means, you can use things which are four meters tall. Jolly good. And let's see here. Just for fun. Just for funsies, we're going to make these slopes. 
Because we can. Aperture science. We do what we must. Because we can. Alright, let's see if she still floats with all that. She does. Jolly good. Didn't even make a problem. It's because we have this nice big... Where is that air pump? Did I leave it in there? I did not. Let's do... Just this quickly. Make sure we're still doing a floaty float. Save. And we have our AI compartment. Jolly, jolly, jolly good. So, this, uh, this part was a little short. But we're gonna keep it like that. Just so, uh, just so we have it all uh, separated out into lovely bits. Let's just check me notes to see if I haven't missed anything. Could have more than one. Da, 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 da. Okay, nope, we've covered everything. Great, everything I wanted to cover anyway. So, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more... I nearly said more idiots like this. More videos like this by this idiot. Uh, more videos like this, support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Complete ship, start to finish. And next episode we're going to be doing the engines, which is going to be probably a little bit longer and more complicated, but who knows, maybe not. Farewell!